is Jacek Danel and uh, I'm a Polish writer and today within this cycle Time to Listen I would like to share with you a text that was beautifully translated into English by Karen Kovacic um, and English is actually an appropriate language here because this is a story of Claudius King of Denmark, whom you probably know from Shakespeare's Hamlet, although this account is a little bit different because it's his own. Claudius Rex Danie Dixit. Everything comes easy to the handsome ones and to the gorgeous easier still. Their appetites expand unchecked. Not only did he, as older brother, inherit the crown, but still not satisfied, even after he began his reign, he coveted her, my first young love, which was not unreciprocated, though later she pretended not to remember. He gobbled her up like dessert, washed down with wine, and cast about for further conquests. He always strutted around in armor, sword in hand, iron clanging through the castle's corridors. His soldierly insolence and commander's hauteur pushed him to insult the rulers of neighboring countries so they would assemble their armies and he would set off hunched and massive at the head of his troops, a scavenger beetle in a shiny black shell. Women would stand by the roadside, waving cut branches, whispering about his lush curls and broad shoulders. Little boys looked on with gaping mouths. He'd killed old Fortin Brass for a scrap of barren islet, paid for with blood and never set foot on its ground. Nobody did. Remote, scrubbed by an unfriendly sea, the color of a bruise it carried on, indifferent to the fact that it had changed hands at the cost of 8,000 lives on a battlefield trampled by horses and the boots of infantry. No sooner had he released his troops, he started a feud with yet another king and again sent heralds to collect his men. Denmark expanded into new territories like a putrid wound infected with his subjects' corpses. Polonius, that old war who fed on the dust of the castle's registry, saw it clearly in arriving reports. He compared the Excel spreadsheets and pie charts of statistics, the waves of fresh recruits, one after another, their blood soaking into the sand. No one to till the soil or reap the wheat, whole harvests rotting in the field. After that came famine, and after the hunger, pestilence. Is it truly a crime to end one life to save thousands? Even as a ghost, he couldn't refrain from posturing. In full armor, his curls wild, he'd spit out lies instead of clods of earth. Show off buffoon and poser. He knew it poisoned him with a blood sausage fried up with onions. Not a vial poured into his ear. But those cheap pyrotechnics of his allowed the venom of his idiotic revenge into the veins of Elsinore. Our huge public works projects, the building of roads and hospitals, food for transports for the hungry, all for naught. We did what was in our power to do. Polonius was the first to die. Naive patriot with the dull mustache of a clerk, whose only crime was love for his country. Then Rosencrantz, Guildenstern, 
Lertes, Ophelia, the young educated elite who would have made Denmark a truly European nation. And finally, I have Hamlet, arrogant dandy in black tights, waving his grief around like a flail. A seed sown by my brother from beyond the grave, flashing his breastplate and twirling his hair, sprouted and spread till the whole dynasty perished and all of Denmark, its cities, villages, narrow bays, flocks of sheep, cathedral spires and the broad plains so suited to the manoeuvres of troops, down to that tiny uninhabited Iceland he had conquered from the king of Norway, passed into the hands of young Fortin Bras. We could have averted all that, I suppose, had I killed Hamlet at the start. But my conscience forbade me to do so. Thank you very much.